Hey, what's up fiber folks? Welcome back or welcome to High Fiber Knits. My name is Emily and in today's video, I wanna talk about some unexpected ways that knitting might be ruining your personal style. Now, before I say anything else, I want it to be super duper clear that this video is not by any means, in any way, shape or form, a criticism of anyone. If anything, it's more of a reflection on my own experiences with knitting and personal style and some insights that have, you know, kind of been in the back of my mind for a long time and some that have really just crystallized recently. So I wanted to take this in kind of a two-part series. In this video, I wanted to talk about some of the ways that I think the knitting practice can present like a challenge for my personal style and maybe some of these thoughts and reflections resonate with you and then i want to do a part two where i talk a little bit more about the positive ways in which knitting has transformed my personal style now that's not to say that this video is going to be like all negativity but i really do want to just share what's on my mind share some of these reflections and maybe talk through some of the ways that I can pivot this thinking to be a little bit more positive for my personal style because I am very much a verbal processor. I do my best thinking when I'm just allowed to talk and so that's the plan for this one. I will also add that some of these reflections might be part and parcel with the role I play in the knitting community on social media. That's not to say that you know every knitter is going to have this experience because not every knitter knits as much as I do or produces as much knitting content as I do or consumes as much knitting content as I do. So I recognize that like my positionality in the knitting community definitely has something to do with the way I experience knitting and personal style. Um, so yeah, take all of these things with a grain of salt. I'm not trying to say that this is the universal truth for everyone, because it certainly, most certainly is not. So we're gonna get into it. And I'm really looking forward to hearing some of your thoughts on this topic and these reflections as well. Before we get started, I wanna say a big thank you to Book of the Month, who is the sponsor of today's video. Book of the Month is on a mission to help readers discover new books that they love and to promote the work of emerging authors. Every month, their team goes through hundreds of new titles to provide you with a really can't go wrong selection of books and 80% of their titles are from debut or emerging authors. Book of the Month has also just introduced an audiobook option, which as a knitter who often has my hands occupied, I think is an excellent idea. So each month when it comes time to make your choice, you can pick between an audiobook or a hardcover book. I have two selections this month. The first is The Kingdom of Sweets by Erica Johansson. It's a bit of a dark retelling of some of the Nutcracker, which is just a classic holiday story I have danced to the Nutcracker. I've seen the Nutcracker dozens of times and I think it just is a testament to how thoughtful the Book of the Month team is that they're bringing us a Nutcracker related title for December. My other selection for the month is The Storm We Made by Vanessa Chan and this is a historical fiction novel. And historical fiction is one of my favorite genres to read. The plot doesn't really follow the same kinds of tropes that you can expect from other genres as much as I love a good mystery or romance novel. So I'm really looking forward to seeing where this one brings me. If you're interested in trying out Book of the Month for it yourself, they have provided an introductory offer to get your first title for $5 if you use the code SWEATER. So you will be able to find that code as well as a link to Book of the Month in the description box below. And without further ado, let's get into all my thoughts. The first way I think knitting limits my personal style is that I dress a little too much around my knitwear. And you know, as a knitter who shares on social media, I think it's very reasonable to want to show off your knits. Nothing feels better than getting a compliment on a hand knitted garment or an outfit that has any handmade piece in it. 
However, when it comes to dressing with clothing that we have created, we need to be mindful of not falling into that wearing your clothes versus styling your clothes trap. And I think that can happen because especially as someone who creates knitting podcasts, you know, people really want to know details about the finished object. What is the pattern? What is the yarn? And when you do a traditional format knitted podcast or knitting podcast, we're talking about these objects dissociated from the broader context of our wardrobes and our daily dressing the vast majority of the time. And so I think if we take that and we bring it into our daily dressing, it becomes this challenge of we're wearing our knits, but we're not styling our knits because we want to highlight the knit. But sometimes I can leave the outfit feeling a little bit flat. So what I've been trying to think about and what I've been trying to do is being okay with the knitwear not necessarily being the focal point of the outfit, but more so thinking about what it's offering the outfit in terms of elements of style. So this example shows a really realistic outfit formula for me. I'm wearing my favorite thrifted blue jeans, a staple long sleeve black t-shirt, and my champagne cardigan by Petite Knit. And while I love all of these pieces individually, together as a whole, the outfit feels kind of expected and I don't love the high contrast between the cardigan and the t-shirt. So here I'm using that same formula, but I'm swapping out the shirt for this sheer long sleeve that still pulls in the blues and the grays of the denim and the cardigan, but introduces some warm brown tones. And so while the cardigan may not be the focal point of this outfit anymore, I think that the balance of textures and colors is a lot more harmonious and has a lot more visual interest. The second way that I think knitting can limit my personal style is in the sense that sometimes my expectations for my knitwear are a little bit too high. Because we're so involved in every step of our knitted garment process from pattern selection to yarn selection to color selection to any modifications we choose to make, I think sometimes I can feel like I need the knitted garment to be perfect, to be wearable. And sometimes I think that I might hold my knitwear to a higher standard than I hold my commercially made and purchased garments to. And I think what sometimes comes along with that then is a greater feeling of dissatisfaction if I'm putting together an outfit with a knitted garment that I don't feel is perfect. Maybe I knit it too cropped, or maybe I want the sleeves to be a little bit longer or to taper a little bit more rapidly. And so this can be a limiting factor just in terms of my style confidence, but also in terms of how much I'm actually wearing the knits, because if every time I put on the knit, I don't enjoy it, I'm not gonna wanna wear it very often. And so I think one of the solutions to this is for me to be a little bit more comfortable going back to finished objects and making those changes or just being okay with unraveling a project. And this kind of feeds into the next point I want to make, which is that sometimes I feel like I can treat knitting a little bit more like a fashion exercise than a personal style exercise. I think as a knitting content creator and a person who is exposed to a lot of other people's knitting content on social media, whether it be on Instagram or on YouTube, there can be this feeling that you constantly need to be producing more knitting to show. I think this is one of the few niches where production of the content depends on the production of something else first. Even if you think of like a knitting tutorial, those things happen in tandem. But a knitting podcast, like if I need a finished object, I need, nobody needs a finished object, but if I want to have more knitting to show, I'm going to have to do more knitting. And so this can really get me into this kind of like, I gotta keep pumping them out mindset. And then what happens is I have a finished object, I wear it for a few weeks, I wear it for a season, but then 
in a year's time, I'm going to have more projects and other finished objects that I'm going to want to wear more and share with you and talk about. And so what happens to last year's knits? Maybe they don't get as much love as they deserve, but I really believe that fashion is distinct from style because fashion is a reflection of the times. It's a reflection of trends. But personal style is a little more enduring and it's a reflection of you and how you want to communicate yourself and who you are to the world. And if you just have a constant rotation of new stuff all the time, it's kind of hard to establish what that signature style, personal style actually looks like. It kind of also brings me toward the idea of knitting with the trends, which I don't necessarily think is a bad thing. However, I have noted and a lot of other knitting content creators frequently note that there are patterns that just it feels like, although it might not necessarily be the case, it feels like everybody's knitting this pattern. The Sophie scarf. This past spring and summer, the ranunculus had this huge resurgence. Last fall, there was hot water bottle covers all over the place. Like there's so many examples of this. Eva Cardigan by Petite Knit and the Storm Sweater, like those are really happening this fall as well. And so the question for me also becomes in terms of like fashion versus personal style is like, am I knitting this because I've seen it so many times that I think it's grown on me or am I knitting this because I truly believe it has a place in my wardrobe or fills a gap in my wardrobe in terms of what it can offer my personal style. Like, am I knitting this for FOMO or am I knitting this because I truly think it aligns with my personal style? I've definitely made that mistake a couple of times. And that's also why I do a lot of videos about, you know, how I would turn my Pinterest outfit inspo into like knitted outfits or those Instagram inspiration and intentionality videos where I really go into the granular details of what appeals to me about Instagram knitting content and what might be different for me if I were to, you know, knit the object that I'm seeing on that knitter. I think this is really requiring me to be more critical about the content that I'm consuming with respect to how I am being influenced by it. Because at the end of the day, knitting social media is social media and influencing is influencing. And I don't want to subscribe to the idea that we are at the mercy of being influenced or that resistance is futile. I think that being an intentional knitter and curating personal style means it's like it's not an incident. It's not something that happens in isolation. It needs to be a conscious and a routine practice in all aspects of the knitting and the creative process, which includes the social media consumption for me. And now this next point that I want to make might sound kind of counterintuitive because I was just talking about how you need to be careful about knitting trendy things because you want to make sure what you're knitting is aligned with your personal style. And now I'm going to tell you that one of the mistakes that I've made in terms of knitting and my personal style is having this expectation that I'm going to keep all of my knits for forever. And so like subscribing to this idea that knits should be everlasting and that you should be able to keep a knitted sweater for 20, 30 years, pass it down to someone or have this like heirloom quality piece can sometimes be translated into, I need to be making garments that are classic, that are timeless, that are straightforward enough that I'm never going to not want to wear this. And what that can then translate into is a lot of neutral colored stockinette items. <laughs> and so I think that because we have so much control over the knitting process when it comes to pattern, color, fiber, construction, everything, you know, you have a really 
exciting opportunity to be playful and to be experimental and to allow your style to evolve through the knitting practice and the knitting process. Because at the end of the day, most garments do not last forever in our wardrobe, whether or not they've been made by hand. And I think sometimes what I've experienced in the past is like, oh, if I just buy this pair of boots, if I just buy a pair of blundstones, I'm never gonna need another pair of boots. And then my blundstones had a crack in them. And that completely dissolved this idea of there being this keystone piece in my wardrobe that made it that I never had to shop or knit again. And that's just not the case. The reality is you're gonna cycle through clothing in your life. And it's okay if hand knits do that as well. So allow yourself to indulge in what's appealing to you in the moment without the fear that you're not going to want to wear this knit for forever. And this is something that I've thought a lot about with my Storm Sweater by Petite Knit because I did go for the really bright orange color. And I do sincerely believe that it's an excellent color for me and it's a color that I really enjoy wearing but then there's that part of me that's like what if I don't love this color as much next year or what if I feel like I don't want to wear it super often because the orange is so recognizable and and these are thoughts that I've had associated with commercial garments as well but I think ultimately if you're making a choice because you feel that it truly resonates with you and your personal style. It doesn't matter if it falls out of trend. And if it does, trends come back. I don't really think like red, for example, is like a big color this year. I did the tomato soup core make along, but that doesn't mean red's just going to disappear after this season. So I think if you're, you're creating consciously, then it shouldn't really matter if it feels a little bit trendy. Don't be scared of trends. Just integrate trends intentionally, I guess. And don't be so concerned with the everlastingness of the knit. Or make some knits with that goal, but also allow yourself the space to be creative. So I think those are all of the thoughts that I wanted to share on the idea of the knitting practice potentially limiting personal style in some ways. Best case scenario, I've done a good job of popping up some examples through overlays or inserting images here and there, but I hope that some of these ideas or sentiments resonated with you. At the very least, I feel a little bit of catharsis having shared these thoughts somewhere and Hopefully people are listening. I'm assuming some people are listening. And so if you have any thoughts that you would like to share, I would love to hear them down below in the description box. And once again, thank you so much, Book of the Month, for sponsoring today's video. And until I get to see you all again, I am wishing you wellness and happy knitting. Bye, everyone. <laughs>